Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and delve into the challenges and impact of each technology in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The Nelcor pulse oximetry monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on the FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers receive funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for this speaking engagement. For this introduction segment of the series, a discussion on the Nelcor technology. We will discuss engineering Nelcor pulse oximetry, from sensor design to calibration and everything in between. To help provide insight into this topic is Jake Dove, Senior Principal R&D Engineer at Medtronic. Once we have our pulses identified, we know that they're coming from the patient. Next, we need to determine what that relative red and infrared absorption is. And we do that by looking at the percent modulations of the red over the infrared. Now, we could do that by looking at peak to peak over the mean. However, that only utilizes a few points from that plot. A better method would be to, to utilize the entire signal from that plot. And that's what Nelcor does. We can utilize that entire signal from that plus because we can see there's a correlation between the red and the infrared signals. And if we plot that with a small amount of scatter here, you can see it as the red changes on the vertical axis and the infrared signal changes on the horizontal axis, the two signals are correlated. And if we think about why those signals would be correlated, well, we can think back, why would the two signals change at different rates? Well, they would change at different rates because they're being absorbed differently. And as that blood volume changes during that pulse, the red and the infrared lights will change based on that relative absorption. And what we find is that if we perform a linear regression, the slope of that linear regression is going to provide us that modulation ratio. That modulation ratio can then be used to calculate SpO2. And so you, moving through these steps is how Nelcor is able to achieve that plus or minus two digits of performance from a range of 70 to 100% saturation. Here, Nelcor finds the true saturation at the true heart rate of that patient. Next, what we've covered uh, is under these ideal situations. However, we know that there can be noise present in our signals, uh, such as motion noise. So how does Nelcor handle this motion noise? And we do that through something called cardiac gated averaging. Cardiac gated averaging will take in our incoming pulses as we had talked about, decrementing up those incoming pulses into unique pulses to build a composite signal. Now, under these ideal situations, which we've been walking through, when there is no noise present, that composite signal is going to be very reflective of the incoming signal as well as uh, the past signals that we can see. However, when there is such as motion, some motion noise or other types of interference, we'll start to see that the cardiac gated averaging really starts to play, come into account in that it can identify uh, through pulse qual that this is not a useful pulse, or maybe it's partially useful, and it can go in to build this composite signal. Now that composite signal, because it averages, these prior signals can scrub out that noise and decrease that noise such that the new composite signal, which is built up from the prior signals, that new composite signal is reflective of that true patient pulse. Utilizing this method of cardiac gated averaging, again, putting an emphasis on the pulse from the patient, able to scrub out that noise, Nelcor is able to achieve 
motion performance of plus or minus three digits from that SpO2 range of 70 to 100%. And again, we can see this play out in the literature. Here is a study looking at various pulse oximeters and their performance under both low perfusion and motion. Again, a challenging situation for the uh, pulse oximeter to work under low perfusion. All, all of the system has to work in unison here uh, to be able to achieve that performance. And what we can see, Nelcor, um, as shown on the bottom here, was able to achieve uh, the accuracy, um, you know, be uh, better or comparable to the competitors in these various different situations. Um, here, looking at uh, random or both volunteer uh, generated types of motion. And so, again, having a better understanding of how, engine, of how NELCOR is engineered, I hope that you can appreciate then these results, putting an emphasis on the pulse on the patient, identifying noise, motion noise, being able to scrub that noise out with cardiac gated averaging uh, to achieve uh, excellent performance. The last example that we will walk through is employing digital calibration. Nelcor employs digital calibration on the sensor memory chip. And by doing that, Nelcor is able to achieve an accuracy specification of plus or minus three digits within the range of 60 to 80%. And that's contrasted with older technology where that calibration curve had to live on the monitor. Why we're able to achieve, why Nelcor is able to achieve a higher accuracy than the older technologies, we can go back to our fundamentals of pulse oximetry, where we had talked about looking at those absorption spectra of blood. If we do that, we have two different cases here. We have a low saturation case, so shown as the blue dashed line, and a high saturation case shown as the red dashed line. Here, the blue dashed line represents deoxygenated hemoglobin, and the solid red line represents oxygenated hemoglobin. Now, if we have two different sensors that emit two different wavelengths of red light, what we can see is that those absorption coefficients of that light in blood have changed. Specifically, at low saturations, we can notice a larger change. So here, our old LED would have, have had higher absorption at low saturations, where our red-shifted LED, so red-shift, meaning to move those wavelengths further to the red or longer wavelength of the spectrum, that red-shifted LED now absorbs low saturated, or that low saturation signal uh, has less absorption of that red light relative to the old LED. At high saturations, we can see a small change but not, uh, but not as dramatic at the low saturation. If we go back to our signals, what we remember is that the, the absorption in the arterial blood is directly related to the percent modulation of the signal. So our original LED at low saturations could have had signals shown here, low, uh, a lower modulated infrared signal and a higher modulated red signal. Now that red shifted LED, because the absorption decreased for that low saturation case of the red, we're going to expect the percent modulation of that red signal to decrease more, uh, more just for that color change of that LED. Now that needs to be accounted for when we convert that modulation ratio R to an SpO2. And we can do, we can account for that change through the calibration curve. Here, what we are showing are two different calibration curves. The light gray calibration curve would have been for that original uh, sensor, and the darker calibration curve is showing that red shifted LED. So as, that, uh, as the absorption decreased, we can expect to get lower percent modulation of the red, meaning our modulation ratio now has decreased, it's shifted to the right, at the same saturation. And so because the sensor emits different wavelengths, 
we need a new calibration curve to account for that color change. To do this, to do this, Nelcor will run a calibration study during development. When we run these calibration studies, we will look at all the different possible combinations of red and infrared light that we expect our sensors to be made from. By doing this, we can span our manufacturing, our manufacturing tolerance ranges of our LEDs. So LEDs are manufactured, and just like any other manufacturing process, there's variability in that, in, in that process, meaning that the LEDs are not going to be made with one exactly one wavelength, but they're going to span many wavelengths. By building sensors that span both the, the low wavelengths for the infrared and red, as well as high red and low infrared, and high infrared and high red, uh, by building unique sensors that span all of these different wavelengths, we're able to then run a hypoxia study where we measure, uh, where we change patients' saturations, and we measure that modulation ratio, we're able to develop what those calibration curves should look like for the different wavelength combinations. And in that method, build up a uh, a transfer function so that we can calculate what the correct calibration coefficient should be for that wavelength combination of the sensor. And what we can see then is that we have a method to convert our measured LED wavelengths at manufacturing to unique calibration curves. We employ this with now. Uh, so this is employed with the Nelcore digital calibration. Here, we have a digital calibration that is stored or programmed onto the memory chip. That digital calibration is representative of the sensor's wavelengths, specifically their, um, their measured wavelengths at manufacturing. They calculate unique calibration curves. And by doing that, we're able to see a dramatic improvement of performance at low saturations where those absorption coefficients change the most. And in this, we're able to achieve that plus or minus three digits of accuracy within that range of 60 to 80. So with that, that concludes uh, this presentation on engineering Nelcor. And what I hope everyone was able to take away is that NELCOR is based on the fundamentals of pulse oximetry. NELCOR 